Welcome to the Swipe Right Effect podcast, where we will be sharing with you the power to get unstuck by swiping right on yourself. Your host, author C.K. Collins, a.k.a. Kelly, gets personal with her guests, sharing stories of themselves getting unstuck with wisdom and guidance. Where do you feel stuck? Are you waiting to get your new life started after a big change? You've come to the right place. So with that said, let's get started. Welcome back to the Swipe Right Effect, the power to get unstuck. I'm C.K. Collins, a.k.a. Kelly, and today we have a wonderful guest, Debbie Slews. Debbie is the founder of Dare to Declare. She's a coach, trainer, and speaker who specializes in helping people expand their brain's potential to see what is possible for their future with vision boards. As a former child care director, Debbie has studied personal development for over 30 years and has facilitated and witnessed science at work by guiding over a thousand clients to identify and declare their vision, both online and in person, in her Dare to Declare studio. As an adopted child and survivor of child abuse, her mission to support women to declare their truth is her life purpose. Debbie has been featured on many global podcasts in the Corporate Escapist magazine, shared an event with Gabrielle Bernstein, and was interviewed by Jack Canfield, who wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul, for his success TV. She lives in Chatham, Ontario, Canada. So as of today, we have gone global. (laughs) So welcome, Debbie. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited for this conversation. Yeah, me too. And I just want to kind of let everybody know up front, um, Debbie and I are working on a project together. And um, we, I'm putting together a pro, uh, sorry, program <laughs> called Momentum, and it's going to involve six master classes. And Debbie is going to be a teacher of our uh, visioning master class. So that's what we're going to talk about today: envisioning our futures. And I love that you say that's your life purpose because I'm so excited to have found mine in this new program. And I love that we're both focused on women and helping them find their way. I do, I do see with, especially after having written my book and and talking to a lot of women in their fifties that they're in searching mode. I think it's a really natural thing at that, at this age to be searching for our what's next. We've raised our family and we've um, built our careers or built a business. And now we have this new opening in our life. It's almost like a gap year (laughs) before you go to college where you get to take some time and figure out your what's next. And is that, is that how you see it with women in their fifties? Yeah. You know, I was thinking about the word momentum as you said it, and it makes me think of friction of, you know, being slow rolling and then picking up momentum. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I do some studying every morning in this work and we're really thinking more about the idea of thought and thinking. And so I think in our my 20s and 30s, I'll just speak for myself, but I know that a lot of women identify with me in this. I was having thoughts, thousands and millions of thoughts, which is sort of that slow roll and momentum. It just, you're rolling along. You might feel like you're almost in a fog. And then the momentum picks up when you change that to thinking and the difference between thoughts and thinking in that when you're thinking you're intentional Mm. and when you're thinking you you can tune in and dial into what is it that I really want? What are my desires? And we're constantly creating the life, our current reality with our thoughts. Mm. However, when we decide to think, we actually realize that we're not at the effect of them but that we actually are the master and creator of them. And uh, that that's what I'm thinking about as you're talking, actually. <laughs> so a whole lot came up there, but I hope everybody stayed with me uh, with what I was just sharing. <laughs> no, that was great. Yeah, and you were talking about friction. I think that's, you know, that's part of um, life and maturity is, you've been through the, through those peaks and valleys and through the friction and the heartache and the joy and the, the, you know, I mean, just overwhelming love sometimes like for your family or your your partner. And um, all of those things are what build us into who we are. 
And you're right. I think in my twenties, I was very much unintentional <laughs> about life, but I mean, I was also got married at 21. So I guess that was quite the intention. Um, but I think with momentum, um, the definite, I'm definitely going to mess this up, but the definition is, um, energy coming from an external force applying energy. And so that's kind of, I, I love the idea of women helping women, women creating momentum for each other and for themselves by, by working together. Um, and so in my mind, like I have this, this joyous picture of the momentum ladies working with you at our retreat in October. And so I just, can you share with everybody kind of what happens at one of your vision board retreats? Yeah, that's awesome. So I'm going to be doing one actually in a couple of weeks. Um, uh, so I'm coming into the States. So yes, that's for me <laughs> abroad or global. Uh, <laughs> and so I get to do that with you as well. I think we talked about Rochester, right? Potentially uh, New Newport, Rhode Island. Yeah. Rhode Island, Rhode Island. Okay. And uh, yeah. So what I'll be bringing just to start off with is a magazine and for anyone that's done or had experience with doing vision boards, you might know and have experienced that it takes a lot of magazines. And so this was one of my biggest challenges was how am I going to bring magazines when I actually do it in person and outside of my own studio, as we, you heard in my bio or in Ontario, Canada. And so I actually manifested a magazine last fall. It's just remarkable. It's based on the thousands of clients I've worked with. And so each participant will get their own magazine and it's curated based on choices that are specifically, which I'm excited about. We have the same demographic. You know, I love working with women. My demographic is about 35 at the youngest up to as, as you know, senior as like in their seventies. Um, so when I look at the female desire and what they want in their life, I've been able to curate this magazine of images, which is just remarkable. So everybody gets their own magazine. Um, but it's a six hour process. And most people are very surprised by that because if they've done a vision board in the past, it's maybe maximum three hours. But like you do with your clients and, and what I do is we we need to delve in deeper. And you mm -hmm. can't, you know, if I think about the image of construction, you can't build uh, a new vision, a new house on top of a garbage dump. We've got to do some clearing away first and, you know, haul away the trash. And so the trash, the junk, you know, like junk mail, we get to empty that out is we get to look at it and discover. So maybe that's, you know, what's been driving the bus all these years in our mm -hmm. 20s and 30s. And we just been on autopilot and we've been be behaving in my case you know, from some things that were coming, coming up for me in my adoption and things that were coming up from my childhood abuse. And the little girl who was protecting me, she was really running the show. And for many years that worked and then it didn't. And so mm -hmm. we get to notice what is it, the, those paradigms, the limiting beliefs that might be holding us back from stepping into our dream life. Mm -hmm. So that's, we have lots of beautiful exercises that I will lead uh, the participants through. Um, expect a lot of laughter, expect some tears, uh, mm -hmm. but all of it is beautiful and just an expression of your truth. And mm -hmm. then, uh, so we provide notebooks and a pen because you're wanna, going to want to take notes. And then the second part, so that's the first part, which is dreaming. And then the second part is discovery and you get into the magazine and I'll bring some additional images with me as well. And you discover what it is that you really want. And again, those are exercises that I walk you through, um, sometimes in pairs, sometimes in the group, and sometimes just individually going, reflecting yourself. And then the last part of the workshop uh, and the experience has to do with declaring it and also giving you real tangible uh, activities and challenges to apply it because people miss sometimes mistakenly think that the law of attraction, if they've watched the secret or, you know, they think about vision boards, hmm, they're just magic, just kind of happens. Well, the word action is actually embedded in the law of attraction. And so we talk about setting goals after, after you created this vision board. Now, how, you know, how are you going to change your habits? What habits do you want to change that will then invite this new way of being, which will then attract and manifest your full vision? So, that is it in a nutshell, but I mean, like I said, it takes six hours. So it, it is a really life-changing experience. And I've had so many beautiful 
miraculous stories come from when people take the time. And this is one of the highest forms of self-care. They can go to the spa. I mean, I love a good massage and going to the spa, but you know, you get back to life and it kind of goes back to maybe the same old stressors that you were dealing with the day before. Mm. Uh, whereas a vision board, you're taking it home and it's, it's something to help yourself regulate and to focus on and to change your, your day and the next day and the next day until again, you're li- living this most gorgeous, beautiful life. Yeah. Thank you for sharing all that. And I think that's, um, helps give a, a picture of that. And, um, and I think when, you know, you talk about images and I know there's a lot of different ways to do visioning for yourself, but having something to look at every day and focus on is, you know, a practice. And so you, you know, you create this wonderful thing and then um, you have a practice. And I think you, you brought up law of attraction. So I definitely want to go there. I love to talk about that. And I know we're both... Um, fans of uh, Jack Canfield and um, have both attended his, his work, his retreats. And so um, how, how do you handle law of attraction or when you're explaining it to someone and how much of that is part of your practice and, or no, I guess you're coaching, sorry. And um, where, how, how do you guide somebody into the law of attraction? And a practice of that. Yeah. Well, as you heard in my bio, I, I was in childcare for 30 plus years. Mm. And so I was a director. So I wasn't working directly with children, but I, I still have I maintained my certification as an early child educator. And the reason I say that is because so much of my inspiration comes from my past career in childcare and about being playful and about um, using the right brain and um reflective inquiry the way that we are with children and about brain development and what we know is that the first five years of a child's development is crucial to really setting the stage for their success for the rest of their life but what we now know is that the brain can actually rewire itself when I first studied child development um, and we understood about brain research we imagine and the way that we were with children with with um who have been abused um, and not given the love and attention and respect that they deserved, the brain actually shrinks. And that is true. And and we know this, that Mm. the nerve endings don't connect and the brain physically actually shrinks. Um, There's um, a doctor here in Canada, McMaster University. Her name is Dr. Jean Clinton. And her mantra for early years is love grows brains. And so, you know, in my previous career, that was something I would encourage my educators to to, uh, contemplate. But what we know now is that the brain can actually grow leafy type branches and with focused attention. So I love that you brought up about habits Mm. and, and about it being positive. So people like Dr. Joe Dispenza, he talks about the neuroscience and how the brain actually literally rewires itself when you have two factors. One is a thought, so an idea, but it needs to be combined with an emotion, And so when you feel the choice, so you have the thought and then you feel it, you, you literally rewire your brain. There's, there's again, new science coming out around the, about DNA, in fact, even rewiring itself. It's just, it's just remarkable. So a very simplistic way that I like to talk about it is if you um, were walking through a grassy field in the summertime and you took a single walk through it, you wouldn't see where you've walked because it would just close back up again. But if you took the same pathway every single day for say two months, you're going to see a new path that's created. So with that habit of focused attention every day, you are creating new pathways, which then allow you to also see the opportunities. Abundance is all around us. Like simply look right now in the summertime, you look at trees, there's Mm. no way probably you cannot count, possibly count all of the leaves that are on the tree. The, like, but we just take this abundance for granted because it's a tree. But this this um, the abundance that's available to us as well is just, just outside in our blind spot, so to speak. But when we have this focused attention and through the idea of gratitude, we take the blinders off and we start to see opportunities. Like, have you ever noticed when you bought a car that, everyone now seems to be driving that same car. 
Yeah. Now, is that true? <laughs> no, it's just because you're focused on it and you notice it. Right. I had it with my daughters when I had twin girls. I have twin girls. And when I was naming them, I thought their names were quite unique. Hannah and Leah, biblical names. And I just thought, you know, I hadn't heard it. Every little girl that was born with them, you know, after that seemed to be either <laughs> named Hannah or Leah. Is that true? No, it's just, it just, it was because I was focused on that. It was in my attention. So those are some of the more simplistic ways, but um, it definitely is backed by science and uh, is not woohoo. Uh, and it's a universal law. And, you know, we would never scoff at the law of gravity. Like you, okay. you do that, you're going to get hurt because things are going to fall on your head. So, you know, the law of attraction, meaning that where your focus goes, your energy flows, that's just as real as the law of gravity. And we're, we're walking magnets. Like mm-hmm. you, and you probably know someone who's got all of this drama, like they're always involved in some kind of drama. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not an accident. Now they're probably not aware of it because they're attracting it, but the more that they focus on it and they're more, they complain about the drama in their life, the more that they're going to be attracting more of it. So when you decide to change the script that I am a positive person, I am loving, I am loved. I am honest, direct and loving and kind. Then that is the type of people and situations you're going to attract to you as well. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that part you said about the path and if you just keep walking that path because I um when I'm talking to clients I do I I say you know forgiveness is not a one and done it is a practice it is something that you must revisit over and over and over again or it bullies you around so you know you have to be in control you have to take your power and and walk the path of forgiveness and and it's not easy and change is not easy um but when you start taking back your power, it it becomes easier and it becomes so so uplifting. Um, I know on your website, you um, it says you empower people to live their best lives and be the best professional they can be by discovering their vision, balancing their lives, and realizing their inner power. So can you talk about that, the inner power? Yeah, I think. That's a great question. I'm thinking uh, right away what comes to mind and my intuitive thought is intuition. Mm. And so the inner power really is the inner knowing. And, you know, both of us have followed Jack Canfield and he actually has an exercise where you ask yourself a question and depending on if it's a yes or no, your body actually leans back or forward. And so we all have this within us and, and we speak about it. Like I can feel it in my gut or I feel it in my heart or I can feel the tingling in my arms, but do we actually give it the respect that it deserves in terms of helping to guide us with decisions? Mm -hmm. And so that inner power is that inner knowing, and it's something that we were born with. And it, like, again, I'm a Christian, so I talk about it in terms of the Holy spirit, but Mm -hmm. for other people, it's just that inner knowing and circumstances culture, people, religion can quiet it. And we, we start to trust more into the left brain, or we, um, you know, shush that because someone else has told us that they know better than what we actually know for ourselves. So when, what I love to do is, as I said, is help people get clear on what they want. And that also is a very intuitive process. So during the vision board exercise, I don't start off with, okay, what do you want for your career? What do you want for relationships? What do you want that that's, and that's a typical kind of vision board, but actually, as I said, it takes a couple of hours for us to open up the right brain and get into that creative side and use your intuition. So as you're going through the images, as I said about the feeling, the emotion, plus the thought, those two need to work together. So if you're only using those seven areas to kind of guide that process, you're going to have more of, it's going to be aesthetically pleasing. It's probably pleasing your ego, but it's not actually from that true inner voice and that inner knowing. So it's feeling the choices that you're making for the vision board as well. So that's what I help people do. And when they're authentic, their most authentic self, um, that's, that's again, where they're going to manifest the most quickly. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. <laughs> the other day when we were talking, um, 
you were you were explaining to me the difference between goals and visions and it really impacted me i bet i have told four different people this lady debbie i met she said this is the difference between goals and vision and it just it's so impactful so i'd love for you to share that with our listeners sure i think that the words are often interchanged in fact I, you know, like everyone else, I've been playing around with the AI, you know, yeah. GPT or whatever, throwing my stuff in there, see what comes out. And actually what I realize is because it's a compilation of what people know about visioning and vision boards and goals is that it actually doesn't align with what I teach uh, because most of the information out there, it inter interchanges the word vision or vision boards and goals. And so, yes, we clearly distinguish between the two. And that's actually what makes creating a vision board scary. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it makes it less overwhelming because I think many people stop themselves from creating a vision board because it feels like a hustle. It feels like the doing. Mm -hmm. And so the vision board, the way that we do it with the dare to declare is based on three words. And so if anybody's listening here, you might want to get out a pen and paper. This one, this is really good. So most people think of a vision board as what do I want to have, what do I need to do to have that stuff, and then I'm going to be happy. And we flip it on its head. Who do you get to be? Then what do you get to do to be the best version of him or her? And then the have, the abundance shows up. And so using that, you know, be, do, and have, it's the be that's actually the vision, the highest version of yourself. Who do I get to be? So I talk about, um, I'm million dollar Deb. So, um, when I, you know, make a choice with my clothing, for example, I'm like, well, what would million dollar Deb do? Right. So that's my vision, but the vision is also when you're putting images on the board, if you know the how, uh, and again, our ego, and I say this in the kindest, but our ego just wants to do that. It, it wants the gold star. It wants to make the connection. It wants to create a to-do list. If you know the how, it doesn't belong in your vision board. It needs to be bigger. It requires divine intervention. Is that scary? Heck yeah. So because we just want to get to, you know, that doesn't feel realistic. How is that ever going to happen? Mm. And that's where the trusting and the believing comes into play. And so, um, you know, this through Jack Canfield, he has these three words, ask, believe, and receive. And so the vision board supports all of those three words, ask for what you want, but the important piece is believe, believe that it's possible. Okay. Here's something that Jack actually said. I was just in a retreat with him a couple of weeks ago. And he said, if you can have the thought, you can actually have it in your hand because you wouldn't be able to have that thought if you weren't able to do it or yeah. it wasn't able to come to pass. That blew my mind. Like it's as simple as that. That's the belief. So so know that if you think it, it can actually happen. So putting it on the board, divine intervention, and then the difference, then the other piece is the goals. Now the goals, they're connected to the vision, but they are those daily habits you and I talked about. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that you're going to, like, if you think of this, like a journey, the vision is the destination. And then you're going to come back and here in Canada, and I'm sure where you are too, we do lots of road trips, you know, and we pack the car full of snacks and get make sure our gas tank is full. And then, you know, we're on the road for a couple of hours and we stop, say to go stretch our legs, get a coffee. You've accomplished that first goal, that leg of the trip. You celebrate a little bit. Woohoo. Okay. Two hours in, mm -hmm. you don't know what it's going to be like exactly. Maybe you've never been there before. You haven't eaten that food. You don't know the people in this town you're going to, but you've heard it's really beautiful, but it's, those goals are those smaller pieces along the way that you've heard the term joy in the journey that in fact, that it's not like the final destination is the, the full celebration, but you're actually celebrating, you're enjoying the journey on the way, which is actually the joy of life. And, and it is definitely part of the manifestation and manifesting visions in my experience and in my clients it generally is ushered in more in a whisper. Yeah. It's, it's, it's remarkable. Like you can wake up one morning and go, holy crap, I'm living my dream life. When did this happen? How <laughs> did this happen? Because you've just been in 
disciplined persistence, which is from think and grow rich, and that you've just been putting one foot in the other, having one action after another, one goal accomplished, the next goal accomplished, and then you manifested that full vision that felt too big, didn't know how, and and here it is. It's it's actually manifested. And I'll just add one last thing. It's often bigger and better than what you expected. I would agree with that. I had um, I shared with you the other day that my life coach, when I, I had my year sabbatical of travel, and I hired a life coach to try to stay on track to find my new, my what's next, my new life purpose, all of that. And she had me write a vision board because I'm a writer. And I just realized the other day when we were talking, I was like ticking them off in my head because I was like, yeah, I need a new vision board. But then I started realizing all of the things. And these were like, I had, I had, you know, be, be with someone who has a sailboat. I don't know anybody with a sailboat, uh, have a house where I can walk to the ocean in less than five minutes. And, and this was a, a long time and everything's come true. And I, it hit me when I was on the call with you the other day that that last thing was coming true. And it's just like, oh my gosh. So it, it is, you know, I did dream big. I put things I out there that I couldn't have made happen myself, you know, especially not knowing, like, I just want to live by the beach. I didn't ever have any idea where that was going to be. So pretty, pretty crazy. And, and it, and it feels good. And I'm just really excited to do another vision board with you. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, another thing that you and I have in common is, you know, we, we really like to support women and in a way that actually gives them, um, a way to make a living and build something for themselves, build a business that's theirs. So, and I, I so admire how you've put your Academy together. Can you tell everybody about that? Yeah. You know, it's funny that not every manifestation or vision is, you might feel is welcomed. Like mm -hmm. for me, this is my, I, I love this manifestation of the Academy, but I resisted it. Like mm -hmm. I had colleagues and coaches in my coaching program asking me to offer them an online vision board, which I did. And they're like, Dad, this is great. Can we use this in our coaching? Like we all talk about imagination and visioning, but nobody's doing vision boards like you are that aligns with coaching. And I said, sure, just give me credit. And then I just felt like this like big tap on my shoulder, like, you know, God was going, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm trying to give you something here. And I was like, oh no, that feels really big and scary. So I looked on the internet, I searched everywhere. Look, there's gotta be someone else doing this. And there wasn't. So mm -hmm. I just want to put that out there to say that this doesn't all come with ease and flow and, you know, complete <laughs> open arms. Like sometimes I, I often find people are more afraid of success than they are a failure. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're both kind of the same side of the, or two different sides of the same coin, but it's like success can, we, we don't succeed as often as we fail to say that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, or we may not notice all the successes. So the Academy started with sort of pulling me by the scruff of my neck to say, okay, you got to do this. So I hired a course content creator. And one of the other scariest things I did was uh, we built it. We built the airplane on the way up. So I was already enrolling clients or prospects when I didn't have a completed course. Now I like everything pretty with a nice bow on top and then I can go <laughs> ta-da and uh my uh, course content creator would have none of it. And she's like, you know, they're going to help you build it. I was like, right. It feels so scary, but that has been uh, what we've been doing all along. And so this will be the second year. Uh, we've just celebrated two years. We have 35 uh, clients, uh, 37 actually from five different countries and mm. we train the trainer. So what they receive is all of the instruction uh, the tools, we give them um, the PowerPoint slide decks, uh, guides, everything. And uh, I just shortened it to a six week certification. It was 12 and they're now getting some recordings in addition to live coaching for more of an implementation style, which uh, we're going to try that for summer school. So I'm really excited about that. But this growing beautiful community, because we also still meet even after they've certified for free, they come. And we have mastermind. So you talked about, you know, that community idea. So it's so important to have that masterminding. 
and uh, they come together. And so this community isn't just sort of rolling over, but they're all still plugged in and connected. And we just get to celebrate when someone offers the vision board and they have success with it and they're growing their business and people are using it in such unique ways. Like with teenagers, I've got one client, she's running a teen camp in, in Northern um, Ontario. Like it's so fabulous. Someone else is working with the deaf and blind community. Um, oh, wow. Uh, someone in England is, is using it in the Prince's, I keep saying it wrong, Prince's trust, I think. So Prince Charles, well now King Charles, um, so her aspiration is to do a vision board with King Charles. <laughs> I'm like, you go girl. I'd like to see what that looks like on the vision board. Like him sitting there with his little crown on. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And that's so funny uh, because one of the protocols is that you put a picture of yourself in a happy time. So, uh, yeah, we'd ha- <laughs> he'd be sitting on the throne, I suppose. <laughs> uh, yeah. He finally got there. He finally has yeah. a happy time. That's amazing. Well, um, just wanted to go back and retouch on how we're working together coming up in October um, as part of the Momentum program. Debbie has agreed to teach a masterclass on visioning and um, it'll be it'll be that six hour course. It'll be our longest masterclass. Most of them are two hours. But so I'm so excited to to work with you. Thank you for coming on and um, and letting our listeners understand more about visioning and and inner inner power inner wisdom all the things we talked about because i i don't know you blow me away i think you're amazing and so thank you for being on my podcast thank you so much and i just want to acknowledge you too for what you're building and creating and you know the visioning is one piece but there as we said there's the other piece which is goal setting it's also more around knowing yourself setting like we talked about our purpose it's key to have that why, and otherwise you're just going to burn out. So, you know, you really support and wrap around the women in all those areas and give them um, that beautiful, full experience. So I think anyone joining your program is going to be so blessed and very lucky uh, to have you as their coach. So I'm excited to be part of that. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So um, tell everybody how they can get in touch with you. The easiest is probably my website because the, my social media handles are right in there and there's contact information. Actually, there's something fun and free uh, on my front page. There's a fun quiz. So it will give you a score on how big you dream, how well you discover and how clearly you declare what it is that you really want. So just check it out. And uh, so my website is my name, which is Debbie, D-E-B-B-I, Sluice, S-L-U-Y-S dot com. Or you can go to dare the number two declare.com. Go to declare.com. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for coming on today. And um, I, my last question is what I ask every guest what feeds your soul? Thank you for that question. I just feel it in my body. So mm-hmm. I had a meditation with a coach um, in the winter time, and I was sitting on a beach in my, in my meditation and I could see, and I asked the question, what do I need to do? What do I need to do next? And I, I felt it was God. And he said, just stay near me. Wow. Stay near me. And so I've made a commitment every morning as part of my meditation. And I've actually downloaded an app and I read my Bible, but just have a, 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 a wise word of scripture and it's got music behind it and for me to meditate on that. So that's what feeds my soul is to be quiet, to reflect, to know that I am supported and that everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be. Wow. That's beautiful. Gosh, I always love the answer. (laughs) I will keep asking this question because everybody blows me away. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you again. And I appreciate the listeners tuning in today and we will see you next Wednesday. Bye. Kelly's book is available on Amazon and through your local bookstores. Look for the swipe right effect, the power to get unstuck. Kelly's interviews with 10 friends from around the world unlock powerful truths to getting your new life started 